It's the end of March and the end of the first quarter, and it is time to be putting together some of the long-term puzzle pieces of price action that we've been looking at because there are some very impressive things, I do believe, that do kind of correlate to the next, I would say, two to three months of, uh, of likelihood in terms of where we see Bitcoin kind of land and likely the rest of the crypto uh, sphere land as well. Other than that, I want to say a massive heartfelt thank you for all of the well wishes for a nice little anniversary. We had a really good anniversary. And you know what Elsa said to me at the very end of the night when we're in bed? getting ready to go to sleep. Fuck you and see you tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> thanks, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, there's the bird cackling in the background. Um, hey. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I also do want to say that on the note of our sale going on, um, it is really, it's like massively uh, overwhelming right now. Um, Elsa's getting to all the emails as of right now. And I just want to say, uh, holy moly, man, holy moly. It's really, really cool to see people start to really wake up to the power of these tools, especially the crown quant automation because well in my opinion that is just i mean as far as that service goes I, I don't really i think it's unmatched as of right now and uh and i've just been looking in the discord too and people are like putting together their own strategies now and like coming up with some really good stuff which is just awesome to see i mean that is the true purpose of it you know use my templates that's fine use my templates but iterate off of them personalize them so you can make it even better for yourself anyways um yep that's still going on until the end of monday the end of monday will be the last day of that sale and we can just jump right in this one starting off with the big topic of the day which is not the daily we'll get to that later we'll go over lower term time frames a little bit later um but the monthly so the monthly for bitcoin is going to be closing tonight not not just the monthly but also the quarterly and if you do recall back way back on over here in January, we were looking at any sort of a break and close above the median band on the HPDR bands indicator as likely to be get continuation to the top side at minimum of the 38.2 level, which is pretty much where Bitcoin found itself on a high as of this month. Or, uh, sorry, yes, as of this month. Um, in the past, anytime that we have seen Bitcoin essentially uh, test that level after breaking prior all-time highs on a closing basis, it's not just uh, gone on to test that region. It's actually gone on to to actually test the, I believe it is the 60, no, it is, is it the, eight, yes, uh, it is a 61.8 level. Yeah, it is a 61.8 level right here, um, minimum. So that is of interest. We saw it right here in 2000 and, um, 2020, Bitcoin breaks the prior time high on this closure. And then boom, 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 boom. Four months later, we do see that test all the way over here on the uh, $65,000, um, you know, all time high at that time. Uh, in the cycle before that, in 2017, again, Bitcoin breaks prior all time high. Let me just show it all on the chart uh, right here. And over the next year or so, we do see a massive explosion, again, culminating in that test all the way up here to that high of the 618 level as well. Now, before that, um, in Bitcoin's history, I would say that the HPDR bands on the monthly just didn't really have enough, you know, time to truly populate. I mean, way back on over here, obviously, it's, you know, it's going up all the way to like the 100% uh, level, which just, you know, <laughs> like that's that's just due to the you know to the newness of the asset and then a little bit over here a few you know just two three years later um obviously those those early returns probably distorted what we're looking at right here so you know do i trust it as much for these earlier cycles no more history benefits an indicator like this and uh and as of right now we do see that the past few cycles have been kind of playing within that sort of uh boundary so when we when we go back over here and zero in on the current um you know on the current uh trajectory we can see again bitcoin's at the 38.2 level okay great um from there we've pretty much all we've seen at least the 50 percent level hit um even when bitcoin was not breaking out to new all-time highs and uh and that would be eighty six thousand bucks just ju ju just around eighty six thousand bucks or yeah just below eighty six thousand bucks uh, to reference the title of this video and then perhaps a long-term target we could be looking at somewhere or wherever the 618 level kind of lands if and when bitcoin does test it so you know these things are going to move around as each and every month passes uh so i'm actually curious to see where these uh will kind of um, find themselves coming into april tomorrow so we'll, we'll you know we'll update on this one um, and I do expect that the 618 level probably does raise up a little bit, but again, you know, we'll see what, uh, we'll see what actually happens when we get that information tomorrow until then, you know, long-term, those would kind of be the next sort of major areas of interest I'd be looking for. Again, this is long-term. I'm not talking about today or tomorrow, probably not even this month of, um, of April, although maybe April, because remember back on over here, when we looked at the April, um, returns by month, first off, April is 
a you know a pretty nice month for Bitcoin out of 13 prior Aprils. Nine of them have closed positively, giving it just over a 69% uh, strike rate. So very, very nice number right there. And the average return on these was about 22.5%. Now, I will say that I did... Uh, for the positive ones, I should say, for the negative ones, did lose an average of about 13 to 14%. Um, but I will say that I did omit the first April over here, just because the returns for this one were a massive outlier, close to 350%. No other April got anywhere near that close. Um, so without that, the average is about 22.5% from, again, the open of the open, <laughs> the open of April. Um, so let's just say that, you know, April opens up somewhere around here. Again, that's a little bit of a, um, you know, might be taking a little bit liberties with this, but but even with that, 22% uh, to the upside quite literally puts you just at the next 50% uh, high, which is $86,000. So, you know, that is of interest and actually will play hand in hand with another thing that we look at soon enough here. And again, you know, April's in in um, in election years have actually all been positive in the past. Not not super positive to be fair, but they have been positive. And then the second quarter, more importantly, um, in election years, has actually been quite positive at uh, returning about 46 and a half percent. So, you know, perhaps we can get a range for the next few months to come, you know, perhaps somewhere between about 86. And, uh, and if we do see a 40% move, I mean, that'd be, that would be, um, yeah, cl very close to a hundred thousand bucks at that point. Kind of crazy. Anyways, moving on from there, I do want to bring back this setup. This, this is a setup that we visited, I think only like once or twice. It is similar to the other daily setup that we have, but this one has a little bit more stringent, um, uh, parameters for this one. And while it does have a rather low hit rate at 33 and a third percent, it does have a very nice equity curve right here. Again, showcasing the dichotomy between risk management and, um, and profit taking. And so my go in, when I go into the, um, in the performance summary, we can see that if I get rid of my face, we can see that the uh, average winning trade is about 41%. The average losing trade, just, just over 9%. So um, this is rather interesting to me because if we go back into the actual charts and we see that this one did fire off um, when we called it out, this was like a week or two ago now. Yeah, um, Thursday, the, the 21st, Bitcoin was trading at 65,500. It did dump a little bit lower than, uh, lower than there, um, but again, that, that's fine. This one only gets invalidated with a, with a move below sixty thousand um, dollars until that happens you know what's 40 percent from the entry well 40 percent from the entry uh actually puts you around ninety thousand um, bucks which is kind of crazy <laughs> as well uh if we go back to the form summary over here we can also see that this on average would take how long let me just see you have to read it from over here um, 58 days on the winning trades on the losing trade trades takes, takes an average of 12 days actually. So we've already, we're, we're very close to passing the 12 day mark, I do believe. So if this one is going to fail, it's becoming less and less likely the more that Bitcoin, it just doesn't go below 60,000 bucks. Um, I would say within, within this next, uh, when would that be exactly? Um, that would be, yeah, by Tuesday, Tuesday of this coming week. Um, so the more time that kind of transpires from Tuesday, the less and less like this is going to be a failure. Thus, if it's not a failure, must be a, a winner. And, um, you know, it's basically two months out from that date of the 21st of March. So that would be uh, April and then May, May 21st. So somewhere around end of May, you know, we could see that explosive movement if this does play out. Again, this setup plays hand in hand with this setup, another daily setup that we have looked at on Bitcoin. This one a lot more aggressive in its uh, in its movements. Um, this one boasting a bit over a 51% strike rate with a almost three uh, three profit factor, which is pretty damn good. And again, you know, over the long period of time, just up and to the right is what we like. And this one is a bit different in the sense that the average winning trade here returning about 22.5%. If you do remember now. If we go back to the actual chart and recognize that this one did fire off um, kind of similarly to the to the other one that we just looked at, uh, getting the low of about just below 61 or sorry, 62,000 bucks, you know, 22% up from that low would put Bitcoin where? 76,000 bucks. And this one plays out on an average of two weeks. So that date on average would be coming up actually on Tuesday as well. So this setup kind of bleeds into the other setup that we just looked at. And so you can, you can, you can understand that there's a slightly, there is a slightly higher probability that Bitcoin does choose the upside of these routes because of, you know, again, if Bitcoin just doesn't go below 60,000 bucks within the next couple of days, well, the other setup, the more powerful one becomes more and more likely over a long period of time, of course, but you know, my point is, is that uh, 
you can see one domino needs leads to the next domino and this is just one of the ways that you can kind of you know appropriate um, uh, the uh, the crown quant automation tools to just kind of you know test what certain probabilities for certain setups are so you can actually have an, you know some sort of a guide going through these markets if not for anything else I mean that's that's even if you don't want to use the automation features um, uh, or if you don't want to trade lower term time frames or anything like that I mean you can you can test out basically any idea that you have as long as you have access to that indicator on trading view like I said um, it is the basically like the last day or two for the sale for this one. This is the lowest price that we're going to have ever for this one um, with the code happy six year for a six year anniversary of this channel and the seventh year anniversary of me and Elsa. Um, but, uh, but again, I've just been very, very loud about this uh, most because, you know, this is a service that, that I've been looking for, for, for a very, very long time. And it plays so great with our other tools, you know, like the HPDR bands and everything. And that's really been, you know, that's really been the bread, and, the bread and butter, what I've been doing um, on this channel for a while now. So you've been liking, you know, all of this, then I think it's kind of, uh, you know, it's for you to decide, of course, but I think it's kind of a no brainer. And, uh, and at the end of the day, this, like I said, will be the biggest sale where you actually get 35% off of all of your service payments for, or sorry, all of your monthly payments for this service. Um, uh, we'll, we're not going to do that again. Just, I just want to be as loud as possible about this simply because I know what's going to happen the day that the sale ends. Hey, I didn't know. <laughs> can I, can I still get it? I know it's fucking coming. So I just want to reduce that as much as possible. And then I'll shut up about it for a while until the next sale. But like I said, it's not gonna be the same thing. We might offer like a free month or something for that, or maybe just a small discount um, for like the first month. For first month, we haven't really decided yet, but it will be certainly a lower discount um, than what we have now. All right, cool. So we've got that. We've got that. Um, let's move on now. And probably yesterday, actually, I'll go over maybe a shorter term time frame setup with this, um, just kind of showcase it one last time before the sale ends. Uh, again, kind of help out. Um, you know, just what you're looking at. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think when it comes to marketing, it's like transparency with that is the best way to do it. Just show what it actually does and you make the decision for yourself. Anyways, okay, we've gone through that. We've gone through that. Um, 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 yeah, let's go back down to the daily now. So we can get into the lower term timeframes here. Okay, good. Um, okay, so today is interesting, um, I do believe, because while I, while I was kind of leaning towards a short-term pullback as a little bit likely over the weekend, we haven't, I mean, we got a little bit on the short-term timeframes, but not, not much on the daily here. Um, now we can kind of see that the daily HPDR median is, you know, is chasing price, you know, with that upslope back again. So <sighs> what would be indicative to me that, hey, there is no pullback in the short term. Bitcoin is ready to launch its way probably towards 75, 76,000 bucks this coming week. Um, it's actually pretty simple here. If I start to see closures above whatever the highest wick of these highs right here is, I think it's this one right here at uh, 71,725 on the index. Yeah, I'm likely looking towards uh, continuation first before any sort of talk of a pullback until that happens. Still, I guess that there is a bit of a chance of this. Um, let's see what daily volatility is looking like here curious it is still contracting so that that actually would make me a little bit more defensive towards a move back down towards the median but you know this is more or less a line that we've seen on the uh, on the hpdrv and of course this is all coming within the context of cme not trading and here's the h he, he, here's volatility for cme it's actually rising and cme is in a lot more of a bullish posturing actually already closing above the 618 level which to me indicates continuation of trend alongside hpdro also being upside position which represents directional volatility so you know i i think i think this is one of those instances where um uh, the the spot index here might be a bit misleading just because you know the weekend on a holiday weekends you don't have CME trading so this is kind of just like I, I think we're getting a lot of noise within this data right here where CME kind of helps get rid of that um, but again you know until CME opens it is still a possibility of course um, but uh, assuming that you know you know assuming that CME opens basically above seventy one thousand five hundred yeah I, I I guess continuation at that point is going to be more likely. It's crazy as it's a sound um, or a spot uh, closes above again that high at 71,725. Um, what would be indicative of a downside move? Perhaps closer to 64, 65,000 bucks, um, somewhere in there. That would be if Bitcoin basically closed below the low of that same day last Wednesday, which is 68,300. Until we get one of those two things, more or less a range going on. I guess we can go to the very low term time frames here, like four hour time frame. The trend is your friend, and that is an uptrend. So, yeah, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps even I'm being too too cautious here. Um, yeah, not bad right there, to be fair. So, yeah, a little bit more delicate in the shorter term time frames, as always, especially over the weekend. It's always difficult there, just because, like I said, a lot of noise. Um, but uh, 
actually more signs of continuation more likely here than not. Um, so fair enough. But again, the focus of today's video really on those higher term timeframes. Um, hey, if Bitcoin can even close above the monthly, by the way, the monthly uh, 38.2 level, which is what? Which is what? Uh, 70,249, which is actually trading above right now. I really have to be leading towards continuation in, in April, um, probably into the 80,000s. Um, so yeah, you know, it still plays into the overall view that we've been having on this channel that continuation to the upside is just the name of the game here. I don't think it's the, the wisest time to get super cute with trying to get in um, positions and whatnot. I think it's time to just... I, I, I think it's monkey time where it's monkey boy time. It's monkey boy time where you just, you just kind of hold on to positions for a while and the market bails you out. Even if you're wrong for a while as well. Um, I know that's not like a super sexy thing to say, but Hey, at the end of the day, um, these are one of the times where I think overthinking things is going to be your biggest enemy. Of course, there will come a time where it's like, okay, it's time, time to be a little more active. But, um, you know, if you're more long-term minded here, uh, I think I think the time to have been more active and uh, was 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 about a year ago, you know, when things were kind of boring but still very constructive. So yeah, one well, things on that note. As always, I want to wish you the best, the best. It's been an absolute pleasure on this nice little Sunday morning here on this very long video. With that said, I want to. Is Elsa gonna say it? Elsa's sleeping at the wheel right now. All right, I'd like to <laughs> what? Do you want to say your line or not? All right, her throat hurts. Ha, ha, ha. Um, anyways, with that said, take care. Much love and see you hopefully tomorrow.